Hey, we're writing a Java application to make a palindrome out of a user provided string. I've already created a new uh, JFrame form in a new project and I haven't done anything else yet. So let's start on that. I'm going to put, I've clicked once on the JFrame. I'm going to put uh, a title in here palindromer. And uh, that's pretty good for that. Let's add some of our user interface elements. This is going to be where the user types in their input value and I'm going to have another label just down here for the palindrome that is going to result. Let's put a text area oops not a text area we want a text I just hit escape there a text field right there and it's not going to have anything written in it but I am going to stretch it out to fill up to the default range over there my uh, tooltips are popping up really fast tonight. And there's a text field for the palindrome result. And remember the tooltips here? I've selected this one. I'm going to add the tooltip. Uh, enter a string to be palindromed. New word for today. And this is the result resultant palindrome. And this one's just going to be simple. It's just going to take the input value, reverse it, and uh, uh, stick the two together to make the palindrome. We're not going to worry about punctuation and things like that. Um, so we're pretty close here to having the user interface done. And you might say, hey, sir, I'm ready for the button. But we're not going to use a button this time. We are going to use a different kind of event listener. Instead, this time of using a button, we're just going to listen for the user to type enter. And this isn't something that we've used before, but I know lots of you um, in your user interfaces would probably like to see that happen. It's a good idea to allow a user to just hit enter on their keyboard and then have uh, that's the go button. Uh, before we do that, though, one last little thing. This field here is not something we want the user to change. We want that to not be editable. Okay, so right click events and we're going to go down to key and this time we want to choose key pressed okay so here is our method here that we're going to use so anytime oh and I just realized we I forgot to do all of the improving of our variable names let's go back and do that right now back to the design view I'm going to change this J label to be input label J label number two is going to be my palindrome label text field 1 is input text field and text field 2 is the palindrome text field. Okay, there we go. Now when we go back all of the names of everything have changed including this method here input text field key pressed. Alright, I have uh, our pseudocode that we wrote earlier. I'm just going to copy and paste that in here. So when the user enters a value, so that's what this whole method is for, so we can kind of get rid of that. We're going to get the input string. Well, that's pretty straightforward. String input equals uh, input text field dot get text. We're used to doing that. All right, and now we're going to output the original string followed by the reverse of the original string. Okay, we're going to make a new string for output which is going to be the input string followed by the reverse of the original string. Well, uh, how do we reverse that? We're going to write a small subprogram or private method which will reverse the string. I'll call it reverse string and it needs to know what the original string was, the input value. And then, okay, so that's going to put the input value and the reverse of the input value together and put it in this output variable here and then I'm going to use that to set the text of the palindrome text field. So set text to be output. Okay, that is finished. We're ready to go here. Except this reverse string method doesn't really exist yet. You see how I've curse, uh, clicked on it there? Cannot find symbol this method reverse string which takes a string. Well, let's write it. We need to do that. So I make some space down here. I've gone outside of this method, just bet before, uh, between this method and the next one. And I'm going to create a new private method, private. And it's not a void method like these other ones up here. This one returns a string value. That string value that it returns gets used in this line. So it's a private, uh, returns a string, and it's called reverse string. 
and it takes a parameter which is a string it takes a string as a parameter and that string we're going to call uh, let's say in I could have called it input or original or anything I like whatever name I pick here does not affect and is not affected by these other names that we've used in other places um, it, it doesn't even isn't even affected by other uh, if I'd use a field variable up here for the whole class it's uh, unique uh, as a local variable on its own you can use anything you want in there all right, so um, let's go down to our pseudocode for um, reversing stuff. There we go. So the first thing we're going to do, because um, string operations, every time you make a new string, it doesn't uh, adjust a string. It actually creates a whole new, whole new string every time. And so it's not a good idea to build strings one character at a time. It's a better idea to make a character array and fill it up one character at a time. It's a much faster operation. Um, strings are stored in character arrays in Java and so we are going to um, work in those in this method. So this first part though isn't strictly necessary. We're going to make a character array called um, uh, input array which is going to come just from the um, uh, input string that we have. So to char array, I believe is the method name. That looks right. So this is just going to get the a character array that is made up of the same characters as this input string. And then we're going to make another character array the same size that will be our output array, that our reversed array. And this one is going to be a new character array, which is empty. And its length is going to be the same as this other character array that we uh, we just got from our string. So let's say our input string was apple. The uh, the character array that's created here is a character array with a p p l e and the five cells or five uh, entries or elements in that array. And then this array is a new character array with length five, uh, and all of the values in it are zero. Not the number zero, but they have the the zero character value. All right, we're going to now copy the characters in reverse order. Well, that's a for loop, and we're going to go through each um, index in both arrays at the same time. So if we start at zero, and i is less than, I can use either array for this, input array dot length. So if the length is five, we're going to go zero, one, two, three, four, because we're strictly less than that array length. And that works out nicely because our arrays are indexed. Uh, from 0 up to 1 minus the length. For Apple it would be from 0 to 4. So for each one we are going to copy a value uh, from the input array into the output array into the ith position, the position for the current iteration through the array. So input uh, output array i at i is equal to input array at well we're gonna start at the end well the end of the array is input array dot length minus one. Remember the last element of the word apple would be the fourth position. Zero, one, two, three, four is uh, position four is the fifth position is maybe the way to say that. And every time we're going to back up by one then we're going to back up by the uh, by i. So that's how we do it. Make sure you think about that about why that works and if you need to write it out there's an example in the PDF file in the course uh, for how that works. So that will copy the values in reverse order from one array to the other. And now we need to return the reverse string. Well, we don't have a string yet. We just have an array of characters. So we're going to make a string called out. And it's going to be uh, a new string, which is made from the output array, uh, character array. So again, the reason we did this is because it's more efficient to do this stage right here, adding one character at a time into a character array, than it is to build uh, a bazillion separate strings, each one character longer than the previous. Uh, imagine a very long word with like a hundred characters in it. You would make a hundred separate strings of increasing length uh, if you didn't do it this way. By doing it this way, you make a single array and just copy one character at a time. Uh, anyway, we're at the end of this. We want to return that value out. Remember, we're returning a string from this method, so we have to have a return uh, uh, statement at the end, and that return statement has to use a string when it returns. Okay, I think we are just about done. Uh, let's run our application. Oh, sorry, I have one more tiny thing I want to do. I only want this uh, method to run when the user presses enter, right? So. 
I need a little if statement here. If the events uh, key stroke is the enter key. So I want to get key code if the event key code is equal to the value 10. And I know from ASCII that that is the value for, um, for the enter key. If the value is 10, then I want to go ahead and do all this stuff in here. Let me just uh, format that. If the event key code is not 10, otherwise the else, so the event key code is something, you know, it, the, you've typed an A or something like that, what I want to do is remove anything that's in the palindrome text field already. So when you start typing something new, I want to clear out the palindrome text field until you've pressed enter again. All right, let's see how we did. Okay, so we are running. I hit F6 on my keyboard to do that. And let's start typing APPLE. Nothing is happening yet, not till I press enter and there the string is in reverse order. Now when I start typing some more, as soon as I started typing, you see how it cleared out? And when I press enter, this is filled in again. Okay, what if I start typing, uh, let's see, well what if I just press enter with an empty string? Okay, nothing really happens. I, the, it runs through, but since it's a length of zero, there's nothing to show for it. Uh, let's try this. Okay, excellent band. There we go. So that's how this works. We are using a key pressed event instead of a button this time, which is a little bit tidier. We have tool tips. And we did all of this using a reverse string method which we wrote for ourselves. And this is the kind of method that you might write in a program and use in many different contexts. So it's a great idea to have this down here. You only need to write it once even though you might use it a bunch of times. Okay, so that's it. We have written our application that uh, produces palindromes. Uh, if you have questions, again, you can ask in the you can ask me by email or you can ask in the course discussion area for this unit. Thanks a lot.